So again, um, approval processes are you know something that that Remedy Force absolutely supports within the application. And those approval processes, I might add, uh, we can actually approve those requests through email uh, as, as well as through the Remedy Force interface. So at this point, we've kind of gone through the self-service, um, you know, quite extensively. And, and again, I think this is one of the things that sets the product aside in the sense of having the service uh, service catalog and being able to request different services, but an easy to use interface that allows customers to um, obtain support and, and, and gain knowledge about the systems that you do offer. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and log off here. And now let's take a look at the product from the perspective of a staff member. So the, these are the individuals that would be supporting those customers, whether they be internal to your organization or external. But when we log into Remedy Force, um, we immediately see our dashboard. And our dashboard allows us to see a number of queries against the database that show us information that's relevant to us and to our job. So I've got a couple of different uh, or four different um, dashboards. And by the way, there, there's a list of our catalog listing of all of the dashboards that are provided out of the box. But you also have the ability to create your own dashboard. So you can define uh, queries against the database that will show you information, again, that's relevant to you and your job, your team that, uh, that you're managing, and so forth. Also, um, we notice the widgets here on the right-hand side where this gives us the ability to <clears throat> um, quickly access, for example, all the open instance for our group. We can see the broadcast um, and, and and what things that, and you may have noticed that also on the self-service, where we have an upcoming event, an outage, we can create a broadcast and very quickly link incidents to those broadcasts and alert the customers that these are. We also have the ability to immediately search the knowledge base here from the search screen. And we have other widgets like world clock times where we can you know, identify the, the different uh, time zones or you know, offices that might be around the country or around the world. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And real quickly, if we look, for example, at this uh, particular quick view that's showing us all of the open incidents uh, for our group, well, we can see a couple of things, one of which um, we can see uh, the, the incident that was registered where the customer was having a problem with email. We can see uh, the password reset and even that service request. Let's take a look here at this uh, particular request here where the customer was um, having a problem sending and receiving email. So at this point, notice we color-coded and did some unique things with the data in these queries showing us all of our Priority 1 records is, is highlighted in, um, in red. But we're going to open up this particular incident record. And at that point, uh, we can begin to um, to resolve this and, and look at this um, this issue. So as we open up the form, we have all of our, all of our clients' information in the top portion of the form here. Uh, then we begin to see our incident details where, for example, um, you know, we might want to identify the category of the incident, why this, um, you know, wh what is the categorization. And these are things that, frankly, you have the ability to um, define when during the implementation. So as part of the onboarding process, our consultants will work with you to um, define the foundation data and define, for example, the structure of information that, um, that needs to be you know, Im imported into the system. So for example, when you talk about the accounts, you know, is an account going to be a department? Is it going to be a geographic region? Is it going to be external companies that you support, things of that nature? So we've defined our, our, um, our category for this particular incident. Notice we have impact and urgency. So it does very much follow the idle processes uh, within, um, within Remedy Force of uh, the concepts of, of idle or impact and urgency, ultimately calculating the priority of the record. Um, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and save this request with, with our update. Other things to note, um, 
<clears throat> you know, when we talk about the, the uh, documented processes that are included with Remedy Force, we can look here at the incident management process. And again, the, these are the documented processes as the product is configured out of the box. So at this point, we can see, um, for example, you know, user contacts the service desk. We register that support request. Um, if we need to reassign it, we're going to do that. If this is a complaint, we have a, a specific process is defined for handling complaints. At any point in time, uh, you know, and as you look at these overarching processes for incident management, they're somewhat vague. So when you start looking at support request registration, well, if we click here, now we can begin to see that this is actually something that's done by the service desk analyst, and these are the individual procedures that they would follow. Link the user details to the new request. Determine the nature of the request. Has this been a previously registered request or is it a new request? And if we're going to manually fill out this new request because there's not a template available, well, here's the work instruction on exactly how to do that. So again, this level of documentation is provided for incident management, problem management, as well as change management. <clears throat> now, again, going back to this particular incident, um, one of the things that we might want to, um, to do is to identify explicitly which asset that this is related to. So obviously the customer is having a problem sending and receiving emails. They're getting a message saying that their um, mailbox is over the size limit. And um, at that point, um, I probably would want to identify the explicit asset that is, is causing this. And that's exactly what we've done here. We have our linked CI where I have the exchange application linked to this incident. Now, if I wanted to create a new link, meaning um, I wanted to link a different asset, I just simply select that icon. And at this point, I'm seeing the assets that first and foremost that are associated to this customer. So if this was a, a common desktop application issue, it would be appropriate to link this laptop to the incident. But I also have the option of linking the assets that are linked to the account. Um, or I can see all of the assets that are in the entire configuration management database. So it is certainly worth noting that you do have a full configuration management database as part of the Windy Force application. And when you talk about populating this um, configuration management database, this can be done through a number of BMC solutions as well as any maybe uh, as well as any solutions that you might be already using. So, for example, BMC uh, publishes a couple of different uh, discovery solutions and asset management solutions, one of those being the uh, Footprints Asset Core, the other being the ADDM product or Atrium dependency, Discovery and Dependency Mapping Solution. And those solutions can be integrated with Remedy Force to automatically populate your CMDB. So, for example, if it were related to a particular um, server, um, a network device, um, you, you have the most up-to-date information as it relates to that asset and has that discovery tool populated. I should also point out that there is a nice uh, CI Explorer that allows us to see in a graphical representation those assets and the relationships. So, one, we can see this particular incident, uh, 1535, that's linked to our email service and the exchange application. So 1535, that's the incident that we were just looking at. And two, you have the option of seeing this in a number of different formats. But we can then begin to drill down, okay, the customer's having a problem with exchange. Well, really, that's our email service. And at this point, we can see exchange um, as well as the relationship that it has with the hardware uh, and and also, this, you know, uh, we can see any other um, devices that may be used to support the email service. And if we want to drill down in, in any one of these devices, we can see um, other relationships that it might have with other applications and other services. So, you know, this is certainly helpful when we under when we're registering the incident to identify what might be the cause of this incident, but 
more importantly, I think it's really where it's going to come into play is when you start doing risk and impact analysis and change management, having this type of information is really priceless. Um, and again, tools like the BMC ADDM solution, the Atrium Discovery and Dependency Mapping solution, is a solution that can not only inventory and tell you what those assets are on your network, but more importantly, they can um, automate the relationship definition of those assets. So we know that this PowerEdge server has this application on it and it, and it associates that. Also, you might be wondering what these icons are with the red X. Uh, that lets me know that we have open records that are related to that item. So when we talk about the email service, I know that I've got a, a change request. There's a problem record as well as a number of incidents that are open related to that particular service or to that particular uh, configuration item. Okay? So let's go back to the incident here. Some other things that we might want to point out. Um, we are kind of getting tight on time, so I'll, I'll speed things up a little bit. Uh, but we also have full integration with other modules uh, from this incident. So we can see, for example, any problems that might be linked. So here I have a couple of problems that we, um, that we suspect this incident is related to. And at any point in time, we can drill into those problems, see those problems, and do the proper problem identification, root cause analysis, and recommend what changes might need to occur. And then that could lead us right into change management, where if we look at a change request, so as, as we look here, these are all of our existing uh, change requests that are open, but if we wanted to create a new change request, we just simply do so here. Uh, we're going to identify ourselves as the initiator. <clears throat> And then um, with that, instead of creating a change request from scratch, what we might want to do is just simply use one of our templates that we've defined. So at this point, this is going to be an application change. Specifically, we're making a change to Exchange. Now, I can do one of two things. I can type in the word Exchange or a, a few of the characters for Exchange, or I can select from uh, the list of categories that we have and let's say that we're going to update the um, service star exchange service to SP3 or SP. And then we'll go ahead and say this request. Now, the template, the, the luxury of the template does a couple of things for us. One, it will pre populate much of the information. Um, that, that's needed for this request. So as an example, you can see that my impact and urgency, those were things that were automatically populated based upon the template. Now I can certainly go in and adjust those as, as needed. But again, the template um, is, is, is used from an efficiency standpoint when we register that initial request. But also, the template allows us to define specific workflows and processes. I mentioned earlier the approval um, case, uh, approval engine that's part of Remedy Force. So at this point, if we needed to submit this change for approval after we fully have documented it, uh, at this point we can submit for approval. And what we'll see is that uh, that is one, fully documented. So we have um, a record of the fact that I'm the one that had submitted this uh, change for, for approval. And at this point, Jeff Jones is now responsible for approving this change. And so what that would look like on the staff side is that if in, in an email, for example, we would receive an email, and in that email we can do one of two things. We can click on the hyperlink that would take us to the Remedy Force user interface and register um, or, or uh, just you know, vote on the, uh, the change, whether we approve or decline the change. Or we could just simply reply to this email as you're going to see me do here. So we're going to say approved. And we'll go ahead and send that back to Remedy Force. That in turn will update that approval record. And if there's any subsequent approval processes or approvals that need to be obtained, those records would automatically be created.